Jigsaw by Tom McMorrow, Jr. Originally published in Thrilling Wonder Stories, Winter, 1954. Narrated by Tom Thurston. Arrivals and Departures Spaceport Chicago, February 26, 2168 Departing Space Liner American Beauty Galactic Spaceways for Mars Scheduled to arrive Spaceport New Dallas, May 14 87 passengers Captain Anthony Kostov in command From the Associated Press Bulletin the space liner American Beauty crashed in flames today on the landing field at New Dallas, Mars. Officials of Galactic Spaceway stated that loss of life was, quote, limited, unquote. No further details immediately available. Transcript May 27, 2168 The following conversation between the space liner American Beauty and GCA, Spaceport, New Dallas, Mars, was recorded 5-14-2168 and played at the official inquiry today. Kostov, calling GCA. This is Kostov in American Beauty calling GCA New Dallas. Do you read me? Come in, GCA. Over. GCA. GCA to American Beauty. You're in the screen. Come in. All clear for landing. Over. Kostov, check. Coming in. Speed now 10,000. Over. GCA. You are now visible in northern sky. We'll have drink ready. Over. Kostov. That you, Ralph? GCA. Yeah, Tony. Welcome back. Will you have that with soda or on the rocks? Kostov. Straight, with a blonde chaser, if you don't mind. You say you can see me? GCA. Like Sirius on a clear night. Only one problem. Kostov. What's that? GCA. You're smack in between me and that girl in Omaha. I wish you wouldn't block the view like that. Kostov. I'll take my hat off. Better? GCA. Match. Say, what's that light on your starboard side? Kostov. Light? There shouldn't be any. An explosion, followed by sound of roaring flame. GCA. Tony, what happened? GCA calling American Beauty. Jensen. Stewardess to pilot. Stewardess to pilot. The starboard fuel tanks exploded. Fire in passageway. Kostov. Activate all extinguishers. Clear the passengers forward. I'm going to close the emergency bulkheads. GCA. My God, it's a ball of fire. Tony, can you make it? Kostov. I can make anything. If it gets hot enough, I'll spit on it and put it out. Pilot to navigate. Note. At this point, American Beauty's radio went out. Board finding. Flippant attitude of ship-to-port conversation to be deplored. On the basis of this and other evidence, however, the official finding of this board is no negligence. Accident due solely to mechanical failure. Galactic Spaceways, Inc. Office of the Personal Director, 6468. Strictly Confidential. Interviewed employee A. Kostov relative to the unfortunate business of 51468 in which 36 passengers and two crewmen lost their lives. Gave him the news that he was through as a pilot due to the fact that we feel the experience has broken his nerve. Offered him a desk job which he declined as expected, accepted his resignation, effective immediately. Comment. Entire incident most unfortunate. Understand that the line might lose passengers to interplanetary transport service if the American beauty pilot continue to operate our ships, but regret this loss of a valuable employee. Of course, he will not be taken on by any other line, but the profession will be the poorer for the absence of this talented, fearless pilot. On the personal level, hope that this man of whom all associates were fond will not take out his understandable bitterness in any violent manner. A. J. Manaman, Director of Personnel 
Death Knell of Spaceships Seen Possible. New York, September 12. Speculation was rife in scientific circles this week over reports that a workable converter transmitter may soon be a practical reality. Should this prove true, the spaceship, a travel fixture for two centuries, would soon be obsolete. The principle of the converter transmitter, long known to scientific enthusiasts, is that of television carried a step farther. As television converts voices and images into electrical impulses and beams into a receiving set which reassembles the picture and voice which started out, solid objects are converted, transmitted and reassembled by this mechanism. Clearly, workable converter transmitters would quickly cause the spaceship to become outmoded, as they would transmit anything and everything at the speed of light. The moon could be reached in less than two seconds, Mars in four minutes. The great question is whether humans could endure the stress of such an experience. The current speculation has been caused by rumours that a leading scientific foundation has secretly started human experimentation with a converter transmitter. Young man wanted to take part in scientific experiment. Must be healthy, intelligent, accustomed to dangerous work. Pay is generous. Right Box W2714, Chicago. Pfeiffer Science Foundation Progress Report Project 3889 Nicholas Garsky, Director 12 September 2168 Concluded interviewing of volunteers Believe the right man has been found Name Anthony Kostov Claims to be a former space pilot Feel that he is the perfect subject Age 28 Physically and morally tough most important, however, he is obviously under a compulsion to prove his courage due to some incident in his recent past. This compulsion should prove helpful in case he learns what happened to Sartorius. Garsky. Report from Council Member Number 7 to the Science Council. Subject. Pfeiffer Converter Transmitter. 1. Verified rumour that Nicholas Garsky, Director of Experiment, plans to use human subject again, despite Council ruling after the Sartorius incident. He admits this intention, defies Council to stop him. 2. Ruled that all activity in connection with this experiment be halted pending investigation and ruling of the full Council. 3. Strongly urge that a. Garsky be permanently restrained from further experimentation with a converter transmitter, as he has proved himself irresponsibly reckless. b. The machine be impounded, since neither the Foundation nor its agent Garsky have exhibited restraint in their handling of this tremendous force or respect for the edicts of this Council. c. That Anthony Kostov, the proposed human subject, be acquainted with the facts in the case of Stephen Sartorius. Memorandum from the Science Council to Anthony Kostov, care of Pfeiffer Science Foundation. The attached medical record is forwarded for your attention. Signed, Robert Shepherd, President. State Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Evanston, Illinois. Case history 8739. Name, Sartorius, Stephen. Date of admission, December 18, 2166. Age at date of admission, 25. Patient was employed by Pfeiffer Science Foundation as electronic engineer for six years, following graduation summer cum laude from Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Worked under Dr. Nicholas Garsky on the Pfeiffer converter transmitter for the three years immediately prior to his mental collapse. No evidence of psychiatric disturbance during these years in college or in childhood. On December 15, 2166, Sartorius placed himself in the converter transmitter and acted as a human guinea pig in an experiment, appeared dazed but unhurt after the experience and was placed in bed, arose late at night, however, and returned to the laboratory. Questioned by a night watchman, he attacked and strangled the man. In the morning he was found, in excellent spirits, working on the machine. At his feet 
was the dead body of the watchman. Patient cannot be classified as paranoic, as there are no persecution delusions, nor does he exhibit symptoms of hebephrenia or catatonia. Is cool, lucid at all times, but totally unable to distinguish right from wrong. Inclines toward capricious, violent outbursts of the most vicious sort, as above. Diagnosis. Insane, unclassified, dangerous. Prognosis. Incurable. Pfeiffer Science Foundation. Progress Report. Project 3889. Nicholas Garsky, Director. 27th September, 2168. Those bumbling amateurs on the Science Council are throwing every possible roadblock in my path. But they will not stop me. A council member inspected the laboratory last week, ordered me to suspend all operations, even took care that the complete medical dossier on Sartorius was sent to my volunteer. When the volunteer showed it to me, I freely admitted the accuracy of the record, told him that if he were afraid, he could withdraw, and I would understand. This brought him quickly into line. My theory as to his compulsion was evidently well-founded. As to the suspension of operations, I shall see to it that it is strictly temporary. Garsky. Mr. Robert Shepherd, Personal. It is regrettable that your organisation has seen fit to interfere with my work. If it comes to the hearing before the full council, I suppose I shall be forced to bring out the facts about some unfortunate medical experiments at the university forty-two years ago. Of course, this might not bother the august president of the council. Perhaps he likes to be reminded of carefree student days. G. Directive from the President of the Science Council to all members, 29th of September, 2168. Suspension of operations on Project 3889 Pfeiffer Science Foundation is revoked effective immediately, and experimentation will be permitted to proceed unhindered. Shepherd, President. Mr. Ralph Watson, Ground Control Approach Division, Spaceport New Dallas, Mars. Dear Ralph, I may be seeing you sooner than you expect. Maybe you've read the rumours about converter transmitter experiments in the facsimile papers. Well, that's me, baby. I'm the human cannibal that they're going to shoot through space. You've heard of the Pfeiffer Foundation. They turned out that stepped-up atomic fuel a couple of years ago. Well, they're my new bosses, and an old bird by the name of Garsky is getting ready to load me into his cannon. And the target is Mars. So if you hear somebody go shooting by a window one of these nights hollering, Look, Ma, no rocket ship! That'll be your old buddy. I'm not exactly crazy about this Garsky character. He looks at you like you were an interesting smear under a microscope. But I'm not getting paid to love him. I'm getting paid to take a chance. And the money's good. Enough to buy me a tramp ship so I can start my own little line when this is over. And speaking of lines... Tell our friend Bannerman I'll be glad to hold him on my lap on the return trip. That is, if he's got the nerve. See you soon, buddy. Tony. Pfeiffer Science Foundation Progress Report. Project 3889. Nicholas Garsky, Director. 4th of October, 2168. All is in readiness for the final step of the experiment. The volunteer has signed a waiver for all claims save that of payment. The mechanism has been triple-checked in test runs with inanimate solids. Tomorrow, at approximately 2.30pm Central Standard Time, the Earth will come into the ideal juxtaposition with Mars. I am confident that the adjustments I have made in the resistor coils and elsewhere will eliminate all shock to the subject and success will be mine. But 24 hours from now and a galaxy will echo to the name of Garsky. Pfeiffer Science Foundation Final Report Project 3889 Nicholas Garsky, Director 5th October 2168 Note 
This report, made by laboratory technician D.J. Williams in the absence of Dr. Garsky for the record. Complete report will be made by the doctor upon his return. Project 3889 was today completed. Result. Failure. The subject Kostov has been found insane and removed under guard. Dr. Garsky left the laboratory in a highly agitated state immediately after the experiment and has not returned. It might be observed by one who was present at both experiments that the eyes of subject Kostov were of the same lifeless glassiness as those of Sartorius after the first experiment in 66. Unidentified body discovered. Chicago, October 6. The body of an elderly man was found floating in Lake Michigan this morning by fishermen. There was no identification on the body, but the clothing seemed to indicate a hospital or laboratory worker. Suicide was indicated by an unsigned note in a pocket reading, I know now what I have done, and it is unthinkable. The Journal of Stephen Sartorius October 6, 2168 There is another nearby like myself. I can feel its presence. This is great news. The time approaches. Soon I will no longer have to while away the hours by writing these pages and then destroying them before the guards come around. For this other must sense my presence too, and working together we will quickly escape this house of madness. They have put it in the compartment next to mine. That is excellent. I will communicate with it by wall taps, and we will soon devise a code. Once this is done, I will communicate to it my plan for overpowering the night guard, and we will be away from this place. Away. Free. Free of these fools who class us with lunatics. And of them all, Garsky was the greatest fool. I hear the guards in the hall saying he destroyed himself when the second experiment failed. Failed, he thought. A fool to the end. It succeeded. Just as the first one did. It succeeded. An answer so beautifully simple, and he never saw it. Garsky, the perfectionist, meticulously checking each last detail, and not seeing the most important fact of all. Of course the machine works. Up to a point. The body that is assembled in the receiving set is physically complete. Atoms and molecules can be converted into electrical impulses and beamed through space, for atoms and molecules are solids. But a soul is not. There is more to a man than atoms and molecules, and that is why I am not a man, although I have a man's body. Thanks to Garsky's machine, I am the first of all time to be free of that foul encumbrance men call a soul. The chains of conscience struck off. I am free to destroy those who oppose me, to kill, to conquer. Yes, conquer. For there will be more of us when we have escaped this prison. I know how to build the machine, and I hear the guard saying this other is strong and bold. That is well. What a combination we will make. I to create the supermen of tomorrow, and my new brother to lead them. A terrible army of soulless creatures to enslave these weaklings that call themselves men. Wait. Do I hear a faint tapping? Yes. It is trying to contact me already. I come, brother. I come. State Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Evanston, Illinois. November 7. 2168. To all staff members, confidential. The escape of the inmates Sartorius and Kostov will not be discussed with members of the press. 
the salient facts, i.e. vital statistics on the dead guard Rasmussen, exact time of the escape, etc., have already been announced by this office, and it is felt that further discussion of the matter would only lead to unnecessary speculation. Lewis Ashley, Administrator, Crashaw. August 22, 2170. Dear Bessie, how you been? I am fine. Hope to see you soon. Can't see you next Saturday night, though. And gone out with a bunch of the boys to see them funny fellows Tony and Steve. They got some great tricks, you know. Best one's a big black box where one sets in it, and Tothers pushes a switch and he disappears. Ain't nowhere's about. You can hunt all you please. Then all at once he's back a laughing like all get out. Course, they act kind of crazy, but there's a barrel of fun. Next Saturday night they say they're going to let me and the boys sit in the box. So when I see you, I will let you know how it feels to disappear. Hope I don't lose nothing in the process, if you know what I mean. Ha ha. Roof. The End Subscribe for your daily stories of futures past. Do it. Just do it.